South Florida, this is Headliners, only on CBS News Miami. Hi there and welcome to Headliners. I'm Lauren Pastrana. It is summertime in South Florida and if you've stepped outside, you know it's almost unbearably hot. Working, even playing outside with our triple digit feels like temperatures can be downright dangerous. Common sense during a South Florida summer can minimize the impact on our bodies, but the experts say there's more to it than that. CBS News Miami's Joe Gorcho reports. There's a reason why Broward Health doctors want people to take every precaution as possible in extreme heat. Every summer, they say they see an uptick in emergency room visits. It's why if you have to be outdoors, drink plenty of water. Fun and games at a summer camp in Fort Lauderdale. Wow. Kids of all ages enjoy the outdoors, while the camp counselors and staff at Reverend Samuel Delavaux Memorial Park make sure the fun lasts by putting safety first. Every 30 minutes is a mandatory water break. Kima Foreman's the park manager. Campers keep cool with misting fans and water at each activity station. And before the fun begins each day, Foreman gets the updated weather conditions. We have the weather alert app on our phones that keeps us updated on the temperatures. With the Saharan dust moved in, it's hot and hazy. Those two is a one-two punch and that increases their susceptibility to respiratory illnesses and they have to take extra special precautions. Dr. Warren Sturman, who practices internal medicine at Broward Health Medical Center in Fort Lauderdale, says the people most at risk of illness in these conditions are young children, pregnant women, and older adults. And the warning signs, if you're in medical danger. Nausea, vomiting, dizziness, headache, those are signs that your body's telling you to get out of the heat. Passing out or change in mental status are signs of heat stroke. If you can't avoid the heat, like Reno Campbell on the grill outside his food truck in Fort Lauderdale. You're like 150 in me, 150 degrees. Drink yep. lots of fluids and wear lightweight and loose clothing. I drink a lot of water. Right through the day, I, I maybe drink like six, seven bottles of water. And other heat safety tips include to avoid strenuous activity during the middle of the day if possible, find shade, take frequent water breaks, and also wear hats and light colors. Reporting in Fort Lauderdale, Joe Gorcho, CBS News Miami. Some serious complaints have gone unanswered at a pricey Fort Lauderdale apartment building. Tenants called CBS News Miami saying there's no air conditioning in common areas, a mold problem, and homeless people gathering in the garage. And that's just a few of their complaints. CBS News Miami's Joan Murray joins us from Fort Lauderdale with what she found inside. This started with a message from a tenant here at the manor, sick and tired of no air conditioning in the hallway and the belief it is leading to mold in the building. Well, we came and checked it out and found out that that tenant was not alone. When he moved into the manor at Flagler Village in May, Pedro Navarro had high hopes. He pays $3,600 a month for a two-bedroom apartment, but now he doesn't think he's getting his money's worth. But the hallways are very, very warm. The grounds look very, very sloppy as well ever since. Uh, maintenance hasn't been the same. A big change from when the manor was built 10 years ago, part of Fort Lauderdale's massive downtown development. An upscale mid-rise with high ceilings, resort-style pool, and underground parking. A tenant invited us in to see about the lack of air conditioning in the hallways. It felt neither hot nor cold. We do smell the mold especially at night because they turn off everything at night. Another tenant showed us mold on her ceiling, saying it formed after the AC went out in the hallway. We talked briefly with property manager Yvette Tillman, who told us to email her questions. She said the building was sold a year ago and her company, RPM Living, is in transition, fixing what's wrong. According to their webpage, RPM Living is one of the largest apartment management companies in the country, overseeing a quarter million units. Manor tenant Joe Boris said since RPM Living took over recently, he has seen a decline. There's been nothing but problems. The gate doesn't close. Sometimes the door doesn't lock. They have homeless people in the lobby, I mean in the garage, um, even in the patio in the empty apartment. It's terrible. So terrible, Pedro Navarro has considered breaking his lease. Just a really rough transition and they're going to pull, pull around. So we'll, we'll be patient and see. 
We did pose questions to the management company and we did not hear back. Meanwhile, tenants plan to take this to the city, see if they could possibly get somebody to look at the mold problem and see if anything can be done. Also, they're going to try to get in touch with the new ownership, a company based in Aventura. In Fort Lauderdale, Joan Murray, CBS News, Miami. When we come back, South Florida paradise or shark infested? We take a deep dive into what experts are saying may be lurking just offshore. From South Florida, this is Headliners, only on CBS News Miami. Welcome back. I'm Lauren Pastrana swimming with sharks. You may be doing so at the beach, most times not even realizing it. But with recent shark attacks in Florida, we wanted to know if we're really seeing more incidents and what might be behind them. CBS News Miami's Nakaya Carrero is in Hollywood Beach with what the experts have to say. The expert we spoke with said it's very simple why we're seeing more shark attacks. It's because more people on the beach have more of these. Their cell phones out and at the ready if something happens. But that's not to say danger doesn't exist. As we take a look above from Drone 4, Florida is the shark bite capital of the world. That's why we set out to find out what you need to know before you get in the water. Somebody say see shark. You know? Sharks, say the word, especially around the beach, and you are likely to feel any number of things. Fear and fascination among them. Sometimes you think about it when you're like not in the, in the water, like what's out there. In the last month, Florida saw six shark attacks injure nine people, and the state leads the world in the number of shark bites. A lot of people have this perspective that they're aggressive animals, and is that true? So obviously we have in these waters potentially dangerous species. We have bull sharks, we have tiger sharks, certainly we have white sharks. But even those animals that have a bad reputation, the chance of them actually biting someone is very, very low. Warmer waters do bring more sharks. And with more of us headed to the beach during the summer months, the two can combine for a potentially dangerous situation. We're dealing with changing climates and that changes the distribution of some of these animals. And this may also affect some of their migration patterns. That doesn't mean more are migrating here. Research actually shows more sharks are headed to the northeast. Still, the Florida Museum of Natural History's annual shark attack report showed the state reported 16 unprovoked bites last year. That's 44% of what we've seen nationwide. But not every fin sighting means a shark is close by. We often see, for example, several other animals mistaken as sharks, including things like dolphins, mantas, tarpons. Doesn't automatically make it a shock. In Miami Beach, ocean rescuers assure beachgoers if they see a predator in the water, rest assured you'll be told to get out. We're always vigilant. We're always looking at the water and making sure that we see what we see and get everyone out. But there are things you can do to avoid a potential problem in the water. Avoid flashy jewelry or watches. They can be mistaken by sharks for fish scales. Also, swim in groups and around lifeguards. And if you spot a school of fish, you may want to move away from them because sharks may be close by. Now, with kind of technology, we're better able to see these animals. Taking you back into the sky with Drone 4. If you're wondering why it feels like most bites happen here in Florida, experts say that's because the state is surrounded by water with much of our population along the coast. As for what you should do if you are injured or bitten by a shark or see one very close by coming for you, experts say you should punch it in the eye or the gills. On Hollywood Beach, Nakaya Carrero, CBS News, Miami. It's summer job season and here in Florida, 16 and 17 year olds can work even more hours to earn extra cash. That's because of a new labor law that took effect earlier this month. Some have panned the law as potentially exploitative, adding that some kids could suffer in school if they're forced to work longer hours. But CBS News Miami Steve Majiri talked to one teen who's taking advantage of the relaxed restrictions. For Gisette Cuevas, teaching kids how to swim in Oak Aquatics isn't just a job. Same exact thing, okay? It's a way to make a difference. I think it's great teaching them lifelong skills. And since she loves the job, she may get to spend more time doing it. A new state law took effect on July 1st, allowing 16 and 17-year-olds to work more than eight hours a day on holidays and Sundays. Hello, buddy. Let's get you 
Gisette and her fellow swim teachers say they may take advantage of it since it's the summer. They always are good with the hours and I can always pick up more shifts. It gives us the opportunity to grow as employees, but also as people growing our skills teaching kids. There you go, all good? Her regional manager says this bill allows them to schedule more swimming lessons, which is a vital service in Florida since the Sunshine State often leads the country in child drownings per year. With this new law, we definitely want to make sure we utilize our um, team members and have more classes to have more safer swimmers coming into our pools. There's more flexibility in the summer, but during the school year, there's still a 30-hour-a-week cap for 16- and 17-year-olds, unless their parents, guardians, or school superintendent waives it. This is one of two jobs for Gisette. She says during the school year, she may want to log more hours, since she says her senior year can rack up expenses. It's very expensive with all the field trips and the portraits and everything in general. We're told about 40% of Oak Aquatics instructors are teenagers, so this bill could help them schedule more classes on Sundays, which we're told are usually the busiest days of the week for them. In Southwest Miami-Dade, Steve Majiri, CBS News Miami. When we come back, see how a legal network in South Florida is making history with their newest president. That's next. From South Florida, this is Headliners, only on CBS News Miami. Welcome back. I'm Lauren Pastrana. A Cutler Bay teenager fighting cancer suffered another blow when his dirt bike was stolen. He's now cancer free and thanks to make a wish Southern Florida, he'll also be able to ride again. CBS News Miami's Terry Hornstein has the heartwarming story. <laughs> My heart dropped, what do you think? 16 year old Anthony Kennedy can't stop smiling. Something I've been waiting for for a long time, couldn't sleep. I've already slept for like three hours thinking about this bike. Make-A-Wish Southern Florida granting the teen's wish on Tuesday, gifting him a new dirt bike and all the gear that goes with it. He's an outgoing 16-year-old uh, boy, and uh, he loves dirt biking, he loves the outdoors. Anthony has had a tough go of it. Last year, he was diagnosed with rhabdomyosarcoma, an aggressive soft tissue cancer. I was going through very hard times. Those hard times made even worse when his beloved dirt bike was stolen. His family didn't have the money to replace it. But today, cancer free and with a new bike, Anthony's life seems to be heading in a new direction. Since I beat cancer, you feel me? I feel like I'm good now. I don't have to worry about nothing no more. His new bike bringing Anthony new hopes. He's leaving his troubles far in the distance. I never thought it was going to come true, but you feel me? It came true. Uh, we're making his day today, and it's something that he'll remember forever. And for the staff at Make a Wish, Anthony's pure joy, something they too will never forget. Never gets old. It's magical. It's why we do it. It's why everybody that puts their heart and soul into this does it. They do it because of these kids. They do it because the kids deserve it. It's not just something that's just nice for them. It's a necessary uh, part of their uh, physical and emotional well-being. Feels good. I ain't gonna lie. Feels good now. I'm okay. Terry Hornstein, CBS News, Miami. The largest legal network in Miami-Dade County has elected its first black woman president. The Miami-Dade Bar Association connects lawyers to resources that help the community. CBS News Miami's Chelsea Jones explains how its newest leader is planning to make Miami proud. Attorney Sharice Morgan holds many titles, but this latest label is a historic one. I'm president of the Miami-Dade Bar. She's the first black woman to be elected to this role in the association's 108-year history. These are images from her swearing-in ceremony in June. It's an opportunity for the bar to reflect the diversity of the community that is Miami-Dade County. As the degrees on her wall show, Attorney Morgan is a decorated lawyer. A graduate of Mercer University School of Law, she currently works as staff legal counsel for Zurich North America. The ideal to be an attorney is one that came from wanting to help people and seeing how many people in Miami-Dade County simply needed some very basic services. As a lawyer, she believes there's a duty to serve. As an attorney, you can see how the law would affect everyone and even its impact on people who it's not intended to affect. So as she embarks on this newest chapter, Morgan hopes that others too see they have a responsibility to pay it forward. I hope that people are reminded of the significance of service. You aren't simply put here as a lawyer to go to work and then to go home. 
you do have an obligation to help people to make the world better, to leave every space that you've entered better than when you came. Attorney Morgan says it doesn't stop with her. In order to continue making Miami-Dade County a better place, she says everyone must get involved. So she's encouraging anyone tied to law, whether you're a student, a lawyer, or you simply have interest in the subject to get connected to the Miami-Dade Bar Association. In the studio, I'm Chelsea Jones, CBS News, Miami. Thanks for joining us this half hour on Headliners. As always, keep it right here to CBS News Miami for up to the minute breaking news and weather 24 hours a day. Make it a great one.